Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Friday. Welcome to another day of learning from home. You made it to the end of the week, and I know that you've been working very hard and trying to get back into the school routine this week since we had spring break last week, and I know you're doing great. And so now we're going to start our day with our saint. We're going to pray and we're going to learn lots more about Easter and I'll read you another Easter story. So today's saint is, yesterday was Elizabeth Ann Satan, today is St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. Francis Cabrini was born in Italy in 1850. But America claims her as a saint because Mother Cabrini became an American citizen in 1909. Her life was filled with difficulties and setbacks. In Italy, she tried to enter several religious communities, but they all refused to accept her because her health was so poor. When she began working with five other women at an orphanage in Italy, the bishop closed down the orphanage that she was working at. And do you remember what an orphanage is? An orphanage is a place for children who have lost their parents and probably other family members who could have taken care of them. So it's it's kind of, it's, it's sad, but it's beautiful when people want to work in an orphanage and to love those children who do not have good parents or any parents. So she then asked the Pope if she and her companions could go to China and be missionaries in China and spread the word of Jesus and the good news that Jesus died for them and rose again. Uh, she wanted to go tell all the people in China and he said no. And so instead, he sent her to the United States, which is our continent, right? It's our country. When she arrived in New York, the bishop then advised her and said, you should probably go back to Italy. However, she remained in New York because he didn't tell her she had to go back. He just encouraged her and just, you know, said maybe you should go back. But she didn't, and she opened orphanages and schools, and she began a small hospital. She and her companions founded the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart. And do you know what the Sacred Heart is? It's Jesus's heart that burns with passion, love for you. So she wanted to name her group after the heart of Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. So now we're going to pray and ask um, the Lord to help us to be more like her and trust God for everything, okay? Her feast day is November 13th. Okay, are we ready to pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, you always said that God did everything. Help us to trust that God cares for us and what we are trying to do on earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. That's her. She's a wonderful saint. She never gave up. People kept telling her no, and she just didn't give up. She kept trying to seek out what does God want her to be. So I love her. She's a great example for us. So boys and girls, in your journal for April, I asked you to tell me what you did for Easter. And if we were in class, I would have you share with everyone what you did for Easter. What are some family traditions that you do at Easter time? Normally people... Um, get brand new beautiful outfits for Easter Sunday. Sometimes we go to aunts and uncles or we have a big feast at our house to celebrate Easter. Normally there's a big meal. Um, sometimes we go on Easter egg hunts and um, lots of good Easter memories. Sometimes we might um, dye eggs or decorate eggs and there's just some really special Easter traditions that your family might do and I would love to hear about them. So maybe for a video, you can tell me what you like to do for Easter. I know this Easter was definitely very different from other Easter's, but try to think of your favorite Easter and what you like about that Easter and maybe what you would like to do next Easter. But it would be kind of cool to hear what you did this Easter because this Easter was so different. So why do we celebrate Easter? We are celebrating that Jesus has risen from the dead. He has overcome death. He has overcome sin and Jesus can come into our lives. 
And so that is why Easter is such a joyful time. We celebrate that Jesus is alive and that he won for us the life of grace, and now we can live forever and ever. We can go to confession, okay, boys and girls, and it's it, what Jesus did for us is a really big deal, and so we want to make it a big deal by celebrating, and so we have 50 days to celebrate, and so we don't just you know, make Easter cookies maybe on Easter. We don't just celebrate Easter on one day. We have 50 days to celebrate it and to remember um, everything. So I was even thinking for myself, maybe every weekend doing something special. So I'm thinking this weekend, I may make some cookies or some pink cupcakes. I don't know, we'll see. But I do have some fun things planned because I want to make sure that I'm celebrating Easter as long as I possibly can, because 50 days is a long time. So I was thinking like just every Sunday, maybe do something special. So Jesus, I want to read to you this. Um, it's a song, um, but I'm going to read it to you. And what's really cool about songs, you might have noticed, is that songs are poems, but you sing them. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to um, read you this poem, but it's really, a, it's also a song too. Okay, ready? Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, alleluia, suffer to redeem our loss, alleluia. Hymns of praise then let us sing, alleluia, unto Christ our heavenly King, alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave, alleluia, sinners to redeem and save, alleluia. And the tune goes like this. Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia. That's kind of how the tune goes. So does that tune sound familiar to you? It sounds familiar to me because we sing that at church on Sundays um, during Easter time. All right, so on Easter Sunday, we light a special candle in our church. And it's a really big, tall, thick, thick candle. And there are... Um, it's really cool. It's called the Paschal Candle. And we light it on Easter to remind us of Jesus' resurrection. And sometimes we call Jesus the light of the world. And the Paschal Candle is a symbol for Jesus. So boys and girls, when you got baptized and you received a candle for Jesus' light, how did that candle get lit? It wasn't from a lighter. They took that candle and they held it up to the Easter candle. Isn't that awesome? They hold up to the Easter candle, and, and you're like, well, I didn't get baptized on Easter. Well, that, that's fine, because that candle is used all year until the next Easter. And there's certain symbols on that candle. There's certain parts on that candle, which um, we're, we will go over, okay? But it'll have the date on there for the year, and um, it'll have some symbols and it'll have a cross. It's just a really big candle. So next time you're at church, if I, if I can get there or if I can maybe show you some pictures of what an Easter candle looks like, you'll recognize it. It's very big, very hard to miss. Okay, so what did, after Jesus died, what did Jesus do? On the third day after his death, Jesus rose from the dead. He took up his body and he won for us the life of God's grace. Because who lost God's grace for us? Adam and Eve in the garden when they sinned. And so Jesus, not Jesus, God promised to send a Savior. Jesus is God. But God, Father God, promised to send Adam and Eve a Savior. Well, save the world. Um, bring the world a Savior. Because Adam and Eve lost, it, all lost that grace for everybody. And so... That's why Jesus needed to come. But the Savior didn't come right away, right? There is many people that forgot about the Savior coming, but not Noah. Noah remembered, and so he still followed God, and so God saved him and the animals from the flood. Moses, and what do we call those people? Moses, Noah, Abraham, the people that didn't forget, and those are the people that also told others, hey, don't forget, a Savior's coming. Who are they called? Do you remember? It begins with a P. Prophets. Okay, and so we still have prophets today who tell us and remind us, hey, Jesus is coming again. 
And so, boys and girls, we are waiting for that. We, you and me, are waiting for that second coming of Jesus. And when Jesus comes a second time, that'll be the final time. And I know we've talked about this in class because I can hear your voices. I can hear them. I can remember you all um, asking me questions and telling me what you remember about how there's, we're going to, um, there'll be a new earth. God will create a new earth. And so we just have to ask what God's will is for us. Okay? And in that new life, there will be no sin, no hurt, no pain. It'll be wonderful. Okay? So the saints are in heaven rooting for us and praying for us because every choice we make is either a step to heaven or not. So we got to make sure that our choices, our actions, our words, and our thoughts are constantly focused on Jesus and what he teaches us and how he teaches us to live our lives. So boys and girls, I want to say a prayer with you and I want you to repeat after me because this is a prayer that you um, probably don't know. Okay? All right, ready? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Amen. Isn't that a great prayer? That is a great prayer. I should maybe add that to my morning prayer because this is a really good one to say in the beginning of the day. Okay? In our next lesson, we're going to review some material um, covered in the chapter, and um, but that will be Monday, so it'll probably start our new, new chapter. So today, your activity page is page 96, and you're going to love it because it goes more in detail of the Paschal Candle. So you're going to read it with your parents, but you also need to... Um, follow the directions because it's going to ask you to add some of the parts to the candle. It's going to ask you to color certain parts of the candle a certain color. So you need to read very carefully what it says, okay? And so um, but you need to make sure that you read the directions very carefully so that you know um, how to complete the candle and what to color and what you're supposed to add, okay? All right, so you can pause the video and you can do that and then come back to me and we'll sing our song. So boys and girls, we're going to do In His Time and Make Me a Servant. Okay, you ready? Make sure that you sing with me so that the Lord can hear your prayer too, okay? In His Time
Girls. This is a very good song, Make Me a Servant. Um, two disciples of Jesus were saying, I want to be the greatest. I want to be the greatest disciple. If you want to be the greatest disciple, Jesus says, you have to be the greatest servant of all. And so, boys and girls, for us to become saints, we have to stop thinking about ourselves. We have to encourage others, lift others up, and we have to be humble. We cannot think that we are better than anybody else. So, boys and girls, when we sing these songs, these are prayers, but these are prayers that we sing. Isn't that awesome? And so when you sing your prayers, it's like you're praying twice over. They count as double. So boys and girls, I hope that you're singing with me so that the Lord can hear you. All right? So now we're going to pray for our day. We're going to not let the devil take it from us. We're going to keep our joy. We're going to keep our peace. And we are going to ask the Lord to claim victory over this day. All right? Are you with me? All right. So let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection over the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome job, boys and girls. All right, boys and girls, now I wanted to read you our Easter story for today, and it's called The Easter Story. So I'll come a little closer. And stuff. When Jesus died, a follower asked the Roman governor Pontius Pilate for the body. Joseph of Arimathea wrapped the body in linen cloth. He laid Jesus' body in a brand new tomb. Okay, no one else had um, been laid in there. And he wrapped the body in linen cloth, and the tomb had, it was kind of like the tomb looked like it had been cut out from a rock. So it was like, not like a little home, but kind of like a hole in the mountain, so to speak. Then a heavy stone was rolled across the opening of the burial cave. Jesus had said, after three days, I will rise again. He did say that, and lots of people heard him, and Pilate was afraid that someone would try to take the body and pretend that Jesus had risen from the dead. So he sent Roman guards to watch the tomb. Jesus had died and was buried on the Friday. And so do you remember what, what that's called? What that Friday is called? It's called Good Friday. Very early in the morning on Sunday after he died, an angel of the Lord appeared. The angel who arrived at the tomb of, of Jesus was a young man dressed in shining in a shining robe. The angel easily rolled the huge stone away from the mouth of Jesus' tomb. Then he went and sat in the tomb. But Jesus wasn't there. Jesus actually um, had risen. The Roman guards were astonished and, feel, and filled with fear at the sight. And they fainted from terror. Not long after, three women stopped by the tomb to put sweet-smelling spices on Jesus' body. And I think that actually Jesus was the one that rolled the tomb or broke the stone or something like that. It doesn't say that an angel did, but whoever wrote this story said that he did. And I think also you can take a test on this story. And I think you can take a test on the Alice story, so if you want to get some AR points, I think you can also take a test on this one too. So you can take a test on this one, and I think you can take a test on this one too, okay? So I would do that so you can get extra AR points. Okay, so not long after, three women stopped by the tomb because they were going to put sweet-smelling spices on Jesus' body. They planned to ask 
for help moving the stone. But when they arrived, the women saw the stone had been already moved from the tomb. Then they saw the angel, and the angel said, Jesus is not here. He has risen just as he said he would. Go now and tell his followers that Jesus has been raised from the dead. And the women left to find Jesus' other followers. So the followers, of course, wanted to see for themselves, and it was Peter and John. So Peter and John. When they returned, the women told Jesus' disciples about the tomb and the angel. Most of them thought that the women were making a mistake. Peter and John ran to the tomb to see for themselves what had happened. There they saw the cloth strips that had been wrapped around Jesus' body, but Jesus was not there. They saw that the tomb was empty and believed that Jesus had come back to life. And quickly the two returned to tell the other disciples. Meanwhile, some Roman guards had made their way back to the city and told their leaders what had happened at the tomb. And the leaders gathered together and quickly thought of a plan to keep the people from finding out that Jesus had risen from the dead. They collected a large sum of money, and they promised to give it to the guards if the guards would lie and say, you didn't see the, that, that the tomb had burst open. Just, just, just say that. Say something else. So they paid the guards to lie, and the guards agreed to say that Jesus' followers had come in the night and stolen the body while they were asleep. So that was the lie they were going to say. They were going to lie and say, Jesus did not raise from the dead. His disciples came and took his body. That's what the lie was. Okay. Later that day, two of Jesus' followers were talking about what had happened. Not Jesus' disciples. These are just followers of Jesus that um, were always with Jesus, um, like wanting to hear what Jesus had to say. And whenever Jesus was talking to crowds of people, they, they like to be there too. So these are Jesus' followers, but not one of his 12 disciples. Okay. Another man came along and walked with them. It was Jesus, but the men did not recognize him. So what story does this sound like? This sounds like the road to Emmaus story that I read to you. It was Jesus, but the men did not recognize him. And Jesus asked the two men what they were talking about. And one of the men sadly told about the death of Jesus. He told about how some women from their group had gone to his empty tomb. And they were told by an angel that Jesus had risen. He told about how Peter and John had also seen the empty tomb. Then the unknown man, which was Jesus, um, ex um, explained to them that Jesus had to suffer and die, and then he was going to rise from the dead, and all, as all of the prophets had foretold. Still the men did not recognize Jesus. So here Jesus is walking with the men. He's talking with them. He's even teaching them about scriptures. And they still didn't recognize that it was Jesus. And so remember, we kind of talked about that because Jesus had a brand new body after that. So even if they don't recognize his face, I would have thought by now, like, they've heard his voice. They've heard how he teaches. Um, I feel like even boys and girls, I feel like if we were to, like, blindfold you in a room and have all these different kinds of teachers talk to you, I'm sure you would be able to recognize um, your very own teacher's voice because you hear me every single day. And so this was their teacher. Jesus was their teacher and they, they still didn't recognize him. And so it was getting late and when they came near the village, the two men urged the new friend, Jesus, to stay with them for the night. And while they were eating supper, Jesus blessed the bread and broke it and gave it to them. And suddenly the two men recognized Jesus. But just as they recognized him, Jesus suddenly disappeared. The two men hurried off to Jerusalem to find Jesus' disciples. They told them of how they talked with Jesus, and they recognized him when he broke the bread. Suddenly, and which was like mass, which was mass, not like mass, which was mass. Remember when Jesus did mass the first time in the upper room with the disciples? And Jesus did that with the other two in that room with them. 
when Jesus, so when Jesus did mass with them, that was when they recognized. So um, suddenly, so so the so the men told the disciples this, and suddenly Jesus was with the disciples, saying, "Peace be with you," and all of his followers were thrilled. But there was one disciple who was not there, Thomas, and Thomas would not believe his friends that they had seen Jesus until he could see for himself. A week later, Jesus appeared when Thomas was there, and so now he believed. Remember what I said. Jesus said, blessed are those who do not see me, and they believe, which he's talking about you and me. Some weeks later, Jesus again met with the 11 um, disciples. He spoke on a hill in Galilee called the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus told them, I have work for you to do. Go to people everywhere and teach what I have taught you. So, boys and girls, this is um, one of the reasons why I wanted to become a teacher was because I wanted to teach children about Jesus. That Jesus had died for them and loves them. And so that's why I enjoy being your teacher because I get to teach you about Jesus. And guess what? Now that you are being taught about Jesus and you have been taught about Jesus from your other teachers and from your parents and from your priests, you get to share the love of Jesus with others too. doesn't matter how old you are and you don't have to wait to be a teacher to do it. And even if you don't become a teacher, you still get to be the one to spread the good news because Jesus said this to everybody. He didn't just say it to certain people. He wants everyone. So once you know, then you go spread the word. And then once they know, because you told them, they're going to go spread the word. And we just keep spreading it all over the world. Isn't that great? And do not forget, I am with you always until the very end of time. So just one more time. Jesus told them, I have work for you to do. Go to people everywhere and teach what I have taught you. And do not forget, I am with you always until the end of time. And when Jesus had finished saying this, Jesus raised his hands to bless all of the disciples. And as he did this, Jesus was lifted into heaven until a cloud hid him from the view of the disciples. What a beautiful, beautiful story. And I love um, hearing and reading all different kinds of um, stories of Easter. And it's just really, really great because the more we talk about it and the more we learn about it, the more it sticks in our brains, okay? Because this is such an important story, okay? So that's why I like talking about it, and that's why we're going to keep um, learning about it. So I do have, I think, maybe one or two more stories um, for Easter, and I will read those to you next week, and I hope by that time I'll have my phone, even though now I'm used to <laughs> um, doing the video on the desktop. Um, we'll just see what happens. So... That'll be really, really nice. So boys and girls, now if you haven't done your religion um, pages for the day, you can pause the video and do that. But I think earlier I had you pause and do it. And so now we're going to do super kids and we need to um, we need to go over some comprehension questions and take our um, little spelling test. This one, I know you guys haven't really studied for it. And so we're just going to kind of make this a practice one just to see if you're remembering the long vowel sounds at the beginning of the words and not, and then I'll maybe hear or I'll just write down the spelling words so you can check, okay? Since I can't do it on the, um, I can't show you the, the super kids, okay? So let's do that. So get a sheet of paper, get your pencil, and then we're going to practice our, uh, and get your super kid workbook too, and then we can practice our spelling words, okay? So, boys and girls, um, just like always, um, I'm going to say the word, spelling word for you, the sentence, and then the word one more time. And if I'm going too fast, pause the video until you're ready, okay? But I'm just going to go over this um, quickly um, for the sake of the um, video and um, YouTube upload, okay? But you can pause the video if I'm going too fast, okay? Are you ready? Number one. Human. Long ago, human beings lived in caves. Human. Number two, 
equal. Two dimes are equal to four nickels. Equal. Number three, title. That book has an interesting title. Title. Number four, tiny. The baby's hands and feet are so tiny. Tiny. Number five, lazy. The hot summer weather made us feel lazy. Lazy. Actually, gloomy weather can make you feel pretty lazy too. Total, number six is total. The total cost is $5. Total. Number seven, secret. Do not tell anyone the secret. Secret, kind of like Mary in the secret garden, right? Okay, number eight. Remember, this is just practice because I know you didn't study, but on Monday, I'm gonna introduce you to your new spelling words for the week, okay? All right, number eight, favor. I appreciate the favor you did for me. Favor. Number nine, student. The teacher cares about every student. Student, which is true. I miss you guys very much, and I care about you a lot. Number 10, broken. Mom tried to fix the broken toy. Broken. Number 11, later. Karen said she would be back later. Later. Number 12, final. What is the final step of the project? Final. All right, boys and girls, now I'm going to display the words here for you. You're gonna pause the video and I want you to check because remember this was practice and I really want you to um, still be you know, working on your um, spelling words. I know that um, we're trying to do a seven hour, full seven hour school day into a, like a one hour video. And that can be really challenging um, since there's so much I wanna teach you, so much I wanna go over. Um, so, but there's some things that we should try to keep doing. So um, keep working on your words and on Monday I'll introduce you to your new words. And like I said, I know that spelling task, we never do it that fast, but you can just pause the videos and things like that if I ever go too fast for you, okay? All right, boys and girls, so check your words and then we're gonna do, I'm gonna tell you what to do for your um, Super Kit page. So boys and girls, if you get behind in the videos, that's fine, it's okay if you get a little bit behind, but instead of trying to catch up by skipping videos and going to the, just going to today's video or, um, you're gonna miss a lot of the things that you will get, you would be getting every single day, right? Like the secret garden and um, you really can't miss those. And then also the um, comprehension when I'm reading to you from the super kid book. And so I, from this book, from the super kid reader. So I really, um, the best thing to do is just, just keep on the course, just watch the next video instead of watching skipping videos and then trying to get to the next one. I don't think anyone's doing that, but I just wanted to encourage you if that was something you were thinking about doing. Um, otherwise your comprehensions, uh, comprehension pages won't be correct and your secret gardens, won't, your secret garden answers won't be good. So you're, today for Super Kids, you're gonna go to page 37 and you're working on the comprehension checks and it's just to help me no, if you're following along in the story, if you're if you're listening to the story, and if you're, um, I know that when I have I do the discussion questions on the story just to help you um, think. I know that even if I say the question out loud, your brain automatically tries to form an answer. So I know that those are really really important to do, even though you can't answer me right away. Um, and so I still like doing those. I think those are very important. And so I want you to do the comprehension page on page 37, and then you're gonna take a picture and turn it in. Okay, sound good? All right. So we're going to read from our reader the last story in the chapter called The Best Party Ever. Okay? And remember yesterday, Etta, Betta, and Doc were able to work out their problems. Okay, everyone agreed that the 100 party was the best party ever. Miss Blossom borrowed jump ropes from the gym teacher. 
It was quite a sight to see two astronauts jumping rope next to Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Cinderella and her fairy godmother. 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, they panted. We did it, we did it, we jumped 100 jumps. And remember that that is the goal of Mary in the secret garden. Her, her goal was to jump 100 and it looks like the super kids did it. And I think Mary will get there eventually, won't she? She just needs to keep practicing at it. But the best part of all was Fritz and Tot's surprise. We couldn't find feathers, said Fritz, so we brought something else instead. Are you ready? Yes, shouted the super kids. Tonk and Fritz held the ends of the folded sheet. One, two, three, they counted, and they tossed the sheet high in the air and flew, and guess what flew out? So I don't know if you ever did this in gym, um, maybe with Miss um, Little, but you know how parachute, how you all have an end of parachute and you put the balls in the middle and how you go like this and then all the balls kind of jump around? Okay, so that's kind of what the kids did here. They got a sheet instead of a parachute and they filled it and so then they popped it up and then guess what flew out? 100 origami birds. Ooh, said the super kid. That sounds like a really great party, doesn't it, boys and girls? So, the story says it was quite a sight to see two astronauts jumping rope next to Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and um, Cinderella and the fairy godmother. Were these people really at the party? Was, was Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, two astronauts, and Cinderella? No, they were not at the party. But the kids dressed up like them. So it's kind of cool to like look at them all dressed up like that and to think, wow, that is that would be really interesting if that really happened. Even though it couldn't happen. Um, because Abraham Lincoln and George Washington lived in a different time as the, as when we started being able to walk on the moon, plus Cinderella and her fairy godmother are a different story altogether. So who are some famous people that the children dressed up as? Who were some of them? Do you remember the astronauts' names? So, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Cinderella, and her fairy godmother. And um, in this picture here, someone dressed up as the Statue of Liberty. Looks like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz and maybe Sherlock Holmes. Okay, so origami is an art form that started in Japan and it involves folding paper into interesting shapes or sculptures. How do you think Chalk and Fritz made the origami birds? So the way that they made the birds was they folded up the pieces of paper in a certain way to make it have wings and a long neck and a beak. And so boys and girls, with your parents' permission and help, you could probably go on YouTube and find origami birds, type it in, and see if there's um, a video showing you how to make an origami bird or an origami boat. And maybe you can spend some time folding paper and working on that. That would be a really, really little great activity to do at home since um, we're at home all the time now. All right, so dealing with anger. So remember, Doc handled her anger by taking in a deep breath and telling it better why she was angry. And so what are some things that you do to make you feel better when you're feeling angry? I like to get a drink of water. I make myself a hot chocolate, especially hot chocolate. That helps me when I feel angry and I need to calm down. Maybe some tea. Um, take a deep breath. Um, sometimes I like to go to another room and that way I can be alone for a little bit. So it's okay to feel angry, boys and girls, and everyone feels angry, um, but there are positive ways to handle anger that will improve the situation and not make matters worse. So let's brainstorm some ideas. So maybe take deep breaths and then out again. Maybe count to 10 inside your head. 
take a walk when you're feeling angry, take a break if you're getting frustrated with something, maybe um, something is hard for you to do and you're just really frustrated and you just can't figure it out, you just step away from it for a little bit, take a nice little break, draw a picture, and then come back to it later. Don't yell, use a quiet voice, and talk about it with the person who's making you angry. Talk about it with them. Exercise, walking, running are some good ways. Using music, I love listening to music, especially when I'm upset. Books or a fun activity to calm yourself down. Like I said, maybe you could draw a picture or do a watercolor painting. So um, we would make a poster of this and we would post this in the classroom and we would encourage each other to do these things in the classroom if we were feeling upset or sad. All right, boys and girls, very good job. So we are going to, we finished the week for Super Kids and then we get to start a brand new week on Monday. We're gonna talk about um, our new spelling words and we're gonna start a new chapter in our Super Kids workbook and reader. So now we're going to do our chicken soup with rice and we're going to do April's. Do you want to say March's for fun? No? Yes? <laughs> Alright, we can do March. Ready? In March, the wind blows down the door and spills my soup upon the floor. It laps it up and roars for more. Blowing once, blowing twice, blowing chicken soup with rice. Alright, now we'll do April's. In April, I will go away to far off Spain or old Bombay and dream about hot soup all day. Oh my oh once, oh my oh twice, oh my oh chicken soup with rice. What a special little book I found. It was in a giveaway pile from a library or an old school. And I picked it up and I thought it was so cool. And um, I showed it to my mom and she says, when did that book um, get published? When was that, when did that book get made? And this book is from 1962. So my mom was two years old when this book came out. <laughs> but I like it. I think it's really cool. I like how there's a different poem for each month. And I hope you love it too. All right, boys and girls, let's read The Secret Garden, and then we'll do some math. Um, not really sure what I'm gonna do, but we will do our best, right? We gotta make the best of things, and we gotta keep a positive attitude when things get tough or don't go our way. And so um, we just gotta keep on moving on. So in our Secret Garden, we're in the chapter and this chapter is called Dickon. Remember, Mary wrote a special note to Dickon last chapter about how she wanted to get some gardening tools and she wanted specifically a spade, which I said was a little hand shovel because Mary made it into the secret garden. But she didn't want to tell anybody. She was afraid that Mr. Craven would lock it up again and not let anyone in. All right, so ready? Mary called her special place the secret garden. In it, she felt like part of a fairy story. She had read about people who went to sleep in a secret garden for a hundred years, but instead, Mary was becoming wider awake. She could run faster and longer now, and she could skip to a hundred. Isn't that awesome? She made it. Every day, she worked in the garden to give the bulbs breathing room. So that's like she needs to clear all the dead leaves and sticks and just move it out of the way so that the leaves could absorb the sunlight and absorb the water. And we want the soil to absorb the water, so she had to move all that off, right? Move that all away. Mary was oddly stubborn when something interested her, and the garden interested her more than anything she had ever known. She learned more about gardening from Ben, and he usually welcomed her company. In fact, he was flattered that she wanted to talk to an old man. Also, Mary no longer spoke to him as if he were a mere servant. She spoke to him like a regular person, because he is. One day he paid her a gruff compliment. You're starting to be a credit to Mistlethwaite, he said. You're not so thin and pale. 
You looked like a plucked crow when you first came here. Mary liked old Ben and even his homespun honesty. One day he told her why he especially liked roses. I was a gardener to a young lady who had a rose garden, and she loved her roses like they were her own children. That was ten years ago, he sighed. But the lady's in heaven now, and the roses are overgrown. I tried tending them and pruning them a bit and digging around the roots, but my stiff old body makes it too hard. Thinking of the secret garden, Mary asked, when roses have no leaves and they look, sorry guys, give me one second, and they look grayish brown and dry, how can you tell that they're still alive? In the spring, look for little bumps on the twigs and branches. Watch them. Watch them after a warm rain and see what happens. He stopped diggling. Uh, sorry, he stopped digging suddenly and stared at Mary. Why do you ask? He said crossly, girls shouldn't ask so many questions. Go off and play, I've got work to do. She wasn't mad that he sent her away. She liked Ben even when he was cross with her. Remember what cross means? It's it's a it's an English term for um, mad, like being upset with her. Mary walked away from Ben and found the path that curved around the secret garden. It was lined with laurel hedges and ended at a gate opening into the woods. She hoped to see rabbits there, but instead she heard a whistling sound coming from the other side. Curious, she followed it into the woods, and what she saw took her breath away. A boy sitting under a tree with rust-colored hair, cheeks as red as poppies, and the roundest, bluest eyes Mary had ever seen. He was playing a pipe, and a squirrel was clinging to the tree just over his shoulder. A pheasant behind a small bush stretched its neck to peek out at him. Nearby sat two rabbits switching their noses as if they had come to a little concert. When the boy saw Mary, he raised his hand. In a low voice, he said, Don't move. Don't move. It would frighten them. He stopped playing and stood up very slowly, almost like he wasn't moving at all. When he finally got to his feet, the animals scampered away, but they weren't scampering because they were afraid. I'm Dickon, the boy said, and you're Miss Mary. He talked in a friendly way, but Mary felt shy around boys. Did you get our letter? She asked rather stiffly. Dickon nodded his head, yes. I brought the garden tools. Okay, boys and girls, would you like to see another picture? There he is playing the pipes and all the animals watching him. And there's Mary coming around the corner. He showed her a package wrapped in brown paper. There's a spade, a rake, a fork, and a hoe. A trowel, too, and some extra seeds. The woman at the store threw in a pack of white poppy and blue larkspur for free. Can you tell me about the seeds? Mary asked, opening the package. The way he talked sounded as if he liked her, so she forgot about being shy. They sat on a log and Dickon ex explained all about the seeds and how to plant them. They heard chirping coming from a holly bush. There's a robin calling us, Dickon said. He's calling someone his friend. He's calling someone he's friends with. He's Ben, he's Ben Weatherstaff's Robin, Mary said. I think he knows me a little. Dickon whispered, he's telling me he likes you. Dickon moved quietly into the bush. He made a sound like a robin's own Twitter. And the robin answered. Have you, do you know anybody that can do like bird calls with their hands or if they have like a bird whistle? Sounds like Dickon knows how to make bird calls with his mouth. Mary was amazed. Do you really understand everything birds say? She asked. Dickon grinned. I think so, he said. I've lived on the moor so long, I feel like I'm one of them. Sometimes I think I'm a bird or a fox or a badger. He laughed and came back to the log. Then he asked, where is your garden? I can help you plant. Mary turned red and then pale. 
She twisted her hands in her lap and she looked at the ground. Dickon was puzzled. He asked, you do have a garden, don't you? Mary said nothing for several minutes. Then she looked up and said, can you keep a secret? It's a great one. If, any, if anyone found out, I think I might die. Which isn't true, but she's, she just, her secret is so precious to her. Dickon was more puzzled than ever, but he said in a good nurtured way, I keep secrets all the time. I keep the animal secrets so no one bothers them on the moor. Mary grabbed his sleeve and spoke very fast. I've stolen a garden. Nobody wants it. And maybe it's all dead, but I don't care. No one can take it from me. Then she threw her arms over her face and she burst into tears. Dickon drew out a soft, oh. Mary wiped her tears. She said, I found it myself and got in myself like the robin. They wouldn't take the garden away from a robin. Where is it? Dickon asked. Mary jumped up. I'll show you, she said. And Dickon followed her through the gate, up the laurel path, and to the ivy-covered walkway. He didn't speak, but he did look kindly at her. Mary found the door and led him inside. It's a secret garden, she said. They're letting it die, but I want it to live. Dickon took his first look around. In a curious whisper, he said, it's a strange, pretty place. It's like we're in a dream. And boys and girls, that is the end of our chapter. And it's just getting so good, isn't it? And chapter 11 is called A Wick Garden. Okay, and I'm not gonna tell you anything about it, but we, I will um, tomorrow, or sorry, Monday, tell you about what wick means, because it's very important. So boys and girls, let's do our chapter 10 sheet. So you can grab your folder or grab your journal, and this is what it looks like. <clears throat> Dickon, there's this, there's the spade and there's the seeds. So we're gonna cut all of it and then we're gonna fold it on that middle part where it has the dots, okay? So let's do that now, get your scissors. And um, grab your paper, and we're gonna cut out the um, sheet, okay? And then we'll come back. So boys and girls, um, this one's gonna be a fun one to color because you can color the carrots, tomatoes, and onions, and the little sprout, and the dirt. So now we're gonna go over the questions we're gonna write inside. So there's two questions. No, one question, and you can write it on that side, okay? So it says, where does Mary take Dickon? Where does Mary take Dickon? So she does tell Dickon her secret. She's letting him in to help her. And so Mary takes Dickon to her secret garden, and he loves it. He walks inside, he's like, looks like a dream in here. So you can pause the video and write down your answer. Here it is. And you're just gonna write it in here and then we will find a place to glue. I need to show you where I glued the other one so we can keep track, okay? So that we don't, um, um, I need to show you where to glue number nine, but if you already glued it, it's fine. Um, I'm not gonna make you redo that, okay? So I'm gonna show you that in a little bit and then we'll move on to math. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I, where I placed them. I placed them here in such as chapter nine here and chapter 10 here. Um, if we keep this up like six on this page, six underneath and six there plus the six we have here, because there's 24 chapters, then there'll be enough room for everything. So, um, I know that these are not the seeds that she got. She got different seeds for um, from the store, um, but I still colored them in. And then um, I thought the handle would be wooden since it's set in the old-fashioned times. So I painted it brown. I'm uh, not painted it, colored it brown. This would be metal. And then 
um, paper, I, I colored it peach, and I just did like a fun color for the border so it can look um, nice and pretty and colorful. And like I said, I wanna color the other ones because this is gonna be such a sweet little second grade keepsake. Um, and so I just think it's gonna be really, really nice. And I hope that you are enjoying the story so far. There's lots more good things to come from it and have our little secret garden. Um, this is our secret garden project, but then there's another one we get to do. And so it's just um, really, really um, fun time, okay? All right, so I'm really proud of you. Good job, and don't forget to write your answers from before. You can um, pause the video anytime or rewind. That's the nice thing about this. You can go back and rewatch things if you need to, if you miss something. So now we're gonna do math. And I'm gonna to try to get creative with math and we'll just see what we have going on for that. And then hopefully um, next week my phone will be here and so we can kind of go back to um, how the videos look normally and how I can edit the videos um, normally and it just um, makes things a lot easier. So hopefully that'll happen. <laughs> but I'll keep you posted and thank you so much for being flexible and for um, being so good and having a great attitude. So. Get your math things and then we'll get started. Okay, so in your math book I wanted to address something and you might want to let your parents know because um, this is important, but you are not gonna do this mid-year review. You're not gonna do this. You, okay, you will do it eventually um, over the summer because Miss Bowles, when she teaches you math in third grade, she's gonna want this. She's gonna want you to do this. So please do not lose this. Don't, um, you don't have to do it now, but she's gonna wanna see this um, when you come back from third grade. It'll be one of the summer school things that she's gonna want you to do. So you don't have to do it now unless you want to, but she's gonna wanna see it and this this will be turned into Miss Bowles, okay? So you don't have to do that. So you, boys and girls, congratulations. You are now finished with the first book. And we're gonna move on to the second book, um, which I'm very excited about. And um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do um, as far as how I'm gonna um, do it, but I'll figure it out. And But I know we, I wanted to start chapter 10, which is very exciting. So we're gonna start chapter 10 today. Um, and then we'll just keep going and hopefully my phone will be on its way very soon. So boys and girls, for math, you're in chapter 10, you're going to be um, practicing adding and you're really going to be doing a lot of um, actually learning how to estimate using mental math strategy. But just to get us warmed up for this first lesson, we're just gonna be practicing our addition skills Okay, and we're gonna find the meaning of sum. So um, your learning goal for math today is that you're gonna relate sum to an addition operation. So your vocabulary word today is sum, and sum means to um, find the numbers and add them together. So if I asked you to find the sum of numbers 31 and 45, then I want you to think in your brain adding. So when you hear someone say the word sum, I want you to think adding, okay? So finding the sum means you need to add, okay? To find the sum means to add the numbers. The sum of 31 and 45 is 76. So that's how we say it. The sum of 31 and 45 is 76. That's how you say it, okay? So can you repeat that after me? The sum of 31 and 45 is 76. The sum of 31 and 45 is 76. I just want you to get used to using that word, okay? So I, it wasn't even about finding the answer, okay? It's just about being able to use that word and knowing how to use that word and how it fits in a math sentence, okay? So then if I ask you to find the sum of 35 and 59, what am I asking you to do? I'm asking you to add numbers 35 and 59, okay? So um, in your grain journal, you can do these notes with me. You can just practice adding these together. So when I say 
find the sum of 35 and 59, I want you to um, show me in your journal 35 plus 59. And I want you to write it um, in your, your um, hundreds, heads, and ones chart with the tunnels, okay? All right, number two, 220 and 48. Find the sum of 220 and 48. Okay, make sure you line them up. So this is the two I want you to practice, okay? All right, same with bar models. So this is how it's gonna sound when you're doing a bar model. Ben has 425 stamps. Peter has 275 stamps. Find the sum of the numbers of stamps, stamps they have. So if I ask you to find the sum, what am I asking you to do? Find the answer by adding, okay? So boys and girls, I want to um, model this for you because the more you see it, the more you hear it, the better you learn it. And the more you do it, that is golden. That is really how you are going to. And if you can teach it to someone else, you've mastered it. So, um, I, of course I want to show you, but I cannot show um, this right now. I wish I had a whiteboard. Maybe that would help, right, if I had a whiteboard. Um, or some paper. I'll try to get creative. Normally I just put my phone down and you can see what I'm doing. Um, so what you're going to do today, since we're just practicing, hopefully um, by Monday I'll have my phone. Actually, hopefully by the weekend. So what I want you to do in your book is you're going to go to your brand new math book B, practice one, and you're going to do page one and page two. Okay? Does that sound good? You're just going to do page one and page two. And we can go over those uh, pages together about what you have to do. So you are going to find the sum of these numbers and you're going to write the sentence too. So if I wanted you to find the sum of 700 and 200, you're going to um, put them in the in the column, 100 cents and ones chart using your tunnels as your strategy. You're going to add them up and then you're going to fill in the sentence. The sum of 700 and 200 is blank. Okay? And you're going to do, so you're going to do two of those, and you're going to do three bar models, okay? And I'm probably going to want to see page two. So, um, because I want to see your bar model, and I want to see your sentences, okay? So you can do it. I know you know how to add. You're very, very smart, and so I know that this is just a good little practice here, okay? So we're going to do that, and then tomorrow... We, sorry, Monday, we're going to work on mental addition. So what are some strategies we can use to help us mentally add, which means adding in our head, okay? Which is good to know, okay? Even though I like it and most math teachers like it when you write everything out, it's still good to know if you can um, do some mental math in your head, okay? So we'll work on some of those strategies. And then next week we'll um, be in a new chapter, which is money. So that'll be very exciting. All right, sound good? Awesome. Boys and girls, it's now time to say goodbye for our learning day today. I hope you did very, very well. I hope you did everything that you're supposed to. And when you listen to me and you're watching and you're participating, you are getting the most out of the learning experience from home. And I really, really appreciate it because I love you all so much and I hope that you're doing well and I miss you in the classroom, but have a great weekend, a fantastic weekend, do something fun, make sure to spend time with your family, and be kind, and be a servant of God, okay? Bye!